Hello everyone and welcome to Etalon. It's been a long while since I've posted, around a month or so, but now it's October and October means Halloween and Halloween means a Halloween doll. This will actually be one of two dolls that I'll be making and showcasing for the holiday, which evidently was the reason for my absence. Halloween being my favourite holiday, so I really wanted to put my all into these projects. For this video in particular, I'll be starting out the spooky season with this doll called The Physician. So let's get started. To start off the Halloween custom, I'll be stripping a Vandala Doubloons doll from the Monster High range and use it as my base. I chose this doll as I loved the mint colour of her skin. This doll is quite unique as it comes with a wooden styled leg. Unfortunately, during the stripping process, the neck peg actually snapped off, which means that the head won't be able to be reattached until this is mended. Sadly, I didn't have parts on hand to be able to rectify this for this doll. While I'll be using the body in the future, I ended up having to create a hybrid for this specific doll. I used a spare Laguna body that I had purchased a couple of months back. It seemed to match really well with the Vandala head, so I was quite happy that I was able to rectify it. With 100% acetone and a cotton swab, I removed all factory paint from the face and head. I created an incision in the back of the head to remove the hair plugs as well. The idea that I had envisioned for this doll was to create a physician, specifically the type of European doctor that looks like a bird. The name of which, during editing, I realised I can't actually say the word on YouTube apparently, as it violates community guidelines. To those unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, this is a particular physician who specialised in the treatment of super, super bad diseases. Another word that I can't say. Their most notable feature being their adoption of their iconic protective gear. This consisted of a protective mask that was fashioned in the style of a bird's beak. In starting this doll, the first step that I had was to develop her face. By cleaning and spraying the face with a coat of Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish, I'm able to start creating her features. The pencils that I'll be using to create her face are the Ablek Dura Faber-Castell watercolours. The idea that I have for this doll is for her to be a spirit in a way. I drew a lot of inspiration from Patrick McHale's Over the Garden Wall, Tim Burton's Corpse Bride, as well as artists like Jim McKenzie. I love the blend of the occult in character designs, so I wanted to make sure this was replicated in my own design. I decided on a mint base as I have a weird fascination with medical and biological history. I always find myself binging Muti Museum's channel looking at scientific illustrations and listening to medical podcasts. For this face-up, I decided on referencing 18th and 19th century medical illustrations, specifically focusing on the illustrations of tuberculosis patients. I wanted to use this as reference as during the time the disease was romanticized and influenced female fashion and beauty standards within Europe and America. In developing this doll, I thought about the idea of creating her as a spirit. I wanted my doll to have succumbed to illness through her time treating it. The mint colour of the base will give her a ghoulish nature to her skin, similar to Emily's in Corpse Bride. During the 18th and 19th century, tuberculosis influenced American and European beauty standards. 
the point where it was common to judge a woman's predisposition to the disease by her attractiveness. The disease heightened already established beauty standards at the time. Pale, translucent skin, sparkling, dilated eyes, red lips, rosy cheeks, delicate nature. Consumption chic, as it was titled. It's pretty insane to think that beauty standards were influenced by disease, but it's not the first time that it's happened, and I don't think it's going to be the last. In developing her facial features, I went with a light mix of blue and pink. I used soft pastels and makeup brushes to blend in the colours into her face. I also used a shimmer to give the skin a glimmer. I've received this question often, so I wanted to address it in this video. Various people have come to me for help as they struggle to have the pencil transfer onto the face when they're doing face-ups. I've come to find that using different pencils, they work differently. I personally use the Albrecht Durer range as they're quite pigmented. However, when I do doll faces and I struggle to have the pigment transfer, I like to have a sponge or water on hand. What I do is dip the topmost bit of the pigment into the water or onto the sponge and then immediately wipe it away on my hand. This is why when you see me drawing, uh, you'll see little dots on my hand. It's basically me just wiping pigment away. Basically, this is so the pigment is softened but not wet, activated in a way. I've seen other artists actually lift the pigment completely from the pencil itself and paint faces with a paintbrush. I think when you're doing doll faces, it's always fantastic to use different techniques and just kind of see what works for you. While this works for me, um, Maybe painting with brushes might be even better for you. I think that all techniques are valid and it's always good to explore different kinds of things. This is just something that I've found that helps. Before I move on, I wanted to do a short break to let you know that this video is sponsored by me, as I have made a Patreon. I truly love what I do, and I love showing my work to you all and how I make dolls. Patreon is a great way to support the creators that you like and the content that you love. If you'd like to support my journey and my creations, I'll leave a link to my page in the description below. I would truly appreciate it if you checked it out or just if you thought about supporting me, it would truly mean the world. Now back on with the video. 
In creating the bird mask, I was able to actually get a file from Thingiverse. I printed it on my 3D printer and modified it with some milliput to fit to the doll's head. If you're curious at all, I'll leave a link to the file in the description below if you yourself want to have your own mask. I based it with a layer of Games Workshop Citadel Gracia. This helps in unifying the colour and allowed me to build highlights and lowlights later on. With a mixture of Gracia, black and another white, I'm able to do three different shades and alternate between these colours to give the mask definition. These doctor's masks were fashioned in a style of a bird's beak. Why they did this was so that they could fill the beak with strong smelling substances. Rose, mint, juniper berries, and most notably for my doll, lavender. During the height of this style, there was a misconception within Europe and Asia that diseases were caused by a thing called miasma. Miasma basically means bad air that bad air and bad smelling things would cause disease, where unfortunately that wasn't the case during the time that this mask was used. They believed that by filling the mask with sweet and heavily scented substances, it would protect someone from bad air and would render the doctor safe from disease. For my doll's mask, I decided in incorporating this kind of ideas by painting lavender all over the mask. These doctors are relatively scary in appearance. Over time, they've kind of had a Grim Reaper-like idea in pop culture and throughout history. While my doll will be a doctor and a physician, I took reference from people like Jim McKenzie, Tim Burton and Over the Garden Wall in creating a blend of sweet and occult. I wanted my doll to be cute. I wanted her to be someone that would live in a cottage in the spirit realm, always happy to help those living or dead. When making her, I envisioned how you would even come in contact with her. I envisioned you walking through a European forest. You realise that you're lost and the trees around you feel like they're closing in. You're starting to panic until you stop. You see a shimmer amongst the tree trunks. It's a wisp. In awe, you follow it to a clearing where you see a cottage. It's covered in lavender and flowers and herbs and wisps. You think to yourself, maybe they can help. You get to the door and you try and knock, only to be greeted by a black cloaked figure in a bird's mask peering down at you and it grabs your arm. You step back in fear and it looks closer at your skin. The fear turning to confusion as they pop their mask and you see a rosy cheeked girl. She looks you all over and you're bombarded with a myriad of questions. Well you're cold but you're not sick, how can I help you? Come on, come on, come. Their house is warm and they offer you tea and cakes. You feel welcome and happy. They're just excited to have company and a new friend and to help you in any way they can. I just love it when characters change a person's preconceived expectations about them. They might be scary at the start, but they end up being sweet little beans in the end. Like No Face from Spirited Away or Emily from Corpse Bride. Or even Wybe from Coraline in a way.
for her hair, I decided on using 100% acrylic yarn in a silver color. I made yarn wefts by wrapping yarn around a chopstick and brushing them out with a dog brush. Typically when you make yarn hair, you straighten out the fibers afterwards, but I opted not to do this as I loved the natural wavy texture that came when I brushed out the fibers. I thought it was really, really cute. Using PVA glue, I glued these fibers to her head. I wanted to create cute pigtails for this hairstyle. In making a pigtail design, I glued wefts along the center of the head and then flipping them back onto themselves for a clean glue-free edge. I'm always questioned why I add pins to the wefts when I'm putting them in the vinyl. Apparently it's not a common technique. I'm always happy to explain why I do certain things, um, so if you're ever curious, you can just leave a comment below and hopefully, if I see it, I will try and um, reply to it. While I do add the pins, I will be removing them within 20 to 30 minutes of adding them. I typically only do it when adding the wefts as they have a tendency to slip due to gravity. I add them to keep the wefts in place until they dry. I also, however, add pins along the hairline or parting wefts as they allow the glue to do a straight line stick. Basically, this means that when you're doing a parting, you add the weft and then you flip the weft back on to itself to create a really nice clean edge without any glue. Adding pins along the glue line will make it so that when you flip the weft back, they will have a really nice clean parting, very similar to how your hairline is. This makes it so it's nice and uniform and I just find that doing this just makes it a lot easier in the end. I decided on making braided pigtails for this hairstyle. I started off this style by sectioning the two separate sides away from each other, just to keep everything neat and organised. I braided two front sections, leaving plenty of curly hair out for the fringe. I started braiding her hair by braiding at the crown of her head and moving down. Once I get to about ear height, I suppose, I will grab the two pieces and tie them into the style and then work my way all the way down to the ends of the hair. Typically, I add bulking wefts when I do braids as it helps me in keeping uniformity when I'm doing a hairstyle. Doing this basically means that I brush out yarn fibers so they're completely just loose fibers, basically. And then I work them into the braids by folding them into multiple different points of the braid. I actually learned this technique from doing loads of research into the hair design of Game of Thrones. Specifically focusing on the intricate styles of Daenerys Targaryen, Sansa Stark, Marjorie Tyrell and Cersei Lannister. I love that when you watch the show, you can see character motivations and story through how their hairstyle is. I won't go into too much detail for the show in this particular video as that's a tangent in itself, but I always just love incorporating this kind of ideals into my designs. I 
I originally was going to have quite puffy pigtails for this hair, but I found that it ended up covering the clothes later on, so I opted to do braids instead. Once I get to the bottom, I tie it off with a mini elastic. Surprisingly, I actually use um, orthodontic elastics that I had from when I had braces. I, not the ones that I've already used, um, just the spare ones. I find them fantastic. They're just the perfect size. Once I was happy with the style, I wet a toothbrush and lay down any flyaway fibers. I also like to spray hairspray onto my fingers and basically stroke the hair so that it keeps the fibers nice and tamed and stuck to the scalp. For her clothes, I decided against doing a traditional style of doctor outfit. I didn't want her to be scary, I wanted her to be quirky in a way. Or at least she wears the gear and the creepy aesthetics and she looks kind of scaring, scary and menacing when she's all dolled up. But underneath she's sweet and charming and so's lavender on her dress. I decided on making multiple layers of clothes for this doll. I've come to find that the thin nature of monster high bodies don't match their heads when creating particular characters. This isn't a critique of the doll line itself, it's more referencing how I envision specific characters. By making multiple layers of clothes, I was actually quite chuffed that I was able to replicate the body shape that I was after. I created a white puffy skirt dress that will go underneath the silver petticoat. On the petticoat, I made sleeves that actually open up, so when she bends her arms, the white dress will be seen underneath. This was purely an aesthetical choice, as I've been playing the early access of Baldur's Gate 3, and I love the character Astrion's sleeves. It's very similar to Tudor and Elizabethan style sleeves, they were very popular at the time. I wanted to do something similar, so I gave it a go and I really liked it, so I left it in this design and I, I'm quite chuffed with it. And I also decided to do some embroidering of lavender all over this dress, as I wanted it to tie in with the mask.
Out of some black polyester material, I made a black half coat with two layers of hood, basically moulded off a doctor's jacket. They were known to wear black coats and hoods and hats and masks. I feel like doing half and half would give the essence of the character design without doing a completely scary and completely enveloped in the character of a doctor. I hope that that makes sense. Basically, I wanted it so that the doll is wearing the clothes, not the clothes is being worn by a doll. I, I hope that that makes sense. I also paired this with some black Monster High doll boots. I have no idea what doll these belong to, unfortunately, as I just kind of found them in my drawer. I, I thought they matched perfectly for this doll. I decided on calling her Lavender for obvious reasons. Once she's assembled, I am able to take her photos. So I'd like to present my doll, Lavender the Physician. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm truly so grateful for you checking out my work. If you'd like to support me and see more of my stuff, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and leave a comment letting me know what you think. If you'd like to support me further, hop over to my Patreon and check it out. Happy Halloween and see you in the next video.